I'm Dr. Allie Borgay-Vincent, and today we're going to talk about Wilms' tumor. So there are three learning objectives today. One, to discuss the epidemiology and clinical presentation of Wilms' tumor. Two, to identify the syndromes associated with Wilms. And three, to diagnose and learn basic management of Wilms' tumor. So looking at the epidemiology of Wilms' tumor, we know that Wilms is the most common renal malignancy in children, so it's an important one to know about. It's also the fourth most common childhood cancer. It occurs at a young age, so usually in children between the ages of 2 and 5, and very rarely occurs in adults. Its incidence per year is about 8 cases per 1 million, and in the United States, about 460 cases are diagnosed every year. The genetics of Wilms tumor is actually very interesting, and it's often used as an example of the Knudsen two-hit model of cancer formation, or the idea that a cell must initiate a tumor only if it has two mutant alleles. This idea is often also used to discuss retinoblastoma, which is another common childhood cancer. There are multiple genes that are commonly associated with Wilms, and the most common ones are listed below. The WT1 gene is the most well-characterized gene and is a tumor suppressor gene. It encodes a transcription factor for critical kidney and gonadal development. P53 is a very well-known tumor suppressor gene, and FWT1 and FWT2 are important genes in bilateral Wilms tumor. There are multiple syndromes that are associated with Wilms, and the three most important are listed below, and they are Wagger, Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome, and Denny's Drash syndrome. Wagger stands for Wilms, aniridia, GU anomalies, and mental retardation. And interestingly, most patients will present with proteinuria or renal impairment. The most common GU anomalies are crypt orchidism and ambiguous genitalia. Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome is an overgrowth disorder characterized by high birth weight, hypoglycemia, macroglossia or big tongue, hemihypertrophy, and abdominal wall defects. Interestingly, it's also associated with other cancers such as hepatoblastoma, adrenal cortical carcinoma, and neuroblastoma. Denny's Drash syndrome is a triad of Wilms, renal disease, and male pseudohermaphroditism. The picture below is of a patient who has hemihypertrophy, so the left lower extremity is much larger than the right lower extremity. And that's an example of Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome. So how does one present with Wilms tumor? So the most common presentation is going to be an abdominal mass or abdominal swelling that either the parents or the primary care doctor notice on physical exam. About 20% of time, patients will present with hematuria, which is blood in the urine, abdominal pain, fever, or hypertension. And interestingly, very rarely patients present with constitutional symptoms seen in other cancers such as bone pain or weight loss. So once you suspect a patient has Wilms tumor, how do we diagnose it? So in order to diagnose it, we want to look at three things. One, we want to define the extent of the disease. Two, we want to assess the contralateral kidney to look for involvement. And three, we want to evaluate for any signs of tumor thrombi. Wilms tumor spreads both locally and hematogenously. It locally spreads to the renal hilar structure, into the renal capsule, and can invade the renal vein and have thrombi in the IVC. Hematogenously, it spreads to the lung and to the liver. So the first test you want to order is going to be an ultrasound with or without Doppler. And this is a painless, radiation-free, and relatively inexpensive test. An ultrasound will help look at the contralateral kidney for involvement, look for hydronephrosis, and also evaluate the IVC or the inferior vena cava. The second test to order is a CT of the abdomen with contrast. That will help better evaluate the contralateral kidney, as well as look at the lymph nodes, which is important for staging, which we'll talk about later. The final test to order is a chest x-ray, which must be done to rule out a lung metastases, as we talked about earlier, as Wilms tumor spreads to the lung and the liver. So how do we manage Wilms tumor? So Wilms tumor is managed based on tumor staging, and the most common staging is based off of the National Wilms Tumor Study. The stages patients from 1 to 5, and 5 is a patient who has bilateral disease. There's interestingly been a very dramatic improvement in the past 20 years in survival. So the treatment includes threefold. One is surgical removal of the entire tumor, which is done by a transection of the abdomen. Second, chemotherapy. And third, radiation therapy. For patients who are stage one and two, 
they generally receive vincristine and actinomycin D. Once patient is stage 3 or higher, doxorubicin is often added, and then patients start having radiation at stages 3 and above. Luckily, the prognosis for Wilms tumor is very good, and the cure rate is about 85%. So in summary, Wilms tumor is the most common renal malignancy in childhood, so it's an important one to know about. It presents in children who are young, so usually less than five years of age. It's associated with three syndromes, Wagger or Wilms, aniridia, GU anomalies, and mental retardation, beckwith Wiedemann syndrome, which is the overgrowth disorder, and Denny's Drash syndrome. It's treated with removal of the tumor, chemotherapy, and or radiation.